Hello, so today is the 21st, Friday. I think I called it yesterday the 21st. I had to correct it in the title. So today is Friday, July 21st. Greetings and cheers. Let me start off by saying thank you. Thank you, people. Right now, um, on the Nebraska Bandcamp um, website, I don't know if this will be able to show it, but I can't see if it sees it, but I'm trying to show it. On the um, stats page for Nebraska, I am currently I currently have the top three um, spots bestsellers, one, two, three, Woven Territories is number one. No Salvation by RAF is number two. And as a result of selling out of the Muse, um, that that sale put me in at the third best seller current at, uh, in Nebraska for Bandcamp. But it's, it's trivial, but it's cool. Just like the picture on the wall of me back there. This is a little... little um, little victories little things to celebrate so someone in new york bought the last that's my last copy of the muse no i'm not whole i don't have any hidden back i have my copy <laughs> the muse is sold out thank you everyone wow people i'm 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 um i'm kind of blown away and super pleased at the response to Woven Territories. And um, I've already gotten a couple of uh, personal reviews in the comments where people are really digging this. Thank you. And like I said, it's not a CDR. It's a CD. It's a properly manufactured CD. So get it while you can. Thank you. Thank you so much. So... I'm glad that I shared that story about, you know, my life yesterday. Um, I do feel blessed, and I'll speak to you directly, Russ Gentilly. I appreciate the sentiments in your words. I do believe that if you lived in town, it probably probably would be nice to meet you. Likely we would end up as friends, and I think that's the same of some of you other folks who stay in contact regularly, and some of you folks who don't. We would probably vibe pretty well but um i do feel blessed and i do feel loved and um it's part of what makes living in omaha tolerable i want and um i'm going to show some records because i got in a um a special order from grapefruit yesterday well i'll just show it and try to why weave my story into it so this is an album I've been after for years, and this is not an original because look it up, Synanthesia. An original of this on the RCA label would be a minimum 500 bucks to get. I've been after this album for years, and um, I'm so glad that Guerson, the, the, the record label Guerson, put it, reissued it. This is some of my favorite kind of music. It's from England. It's those young English boys who had the world on a string. That's really what it seemed like. It's like the world was in a, their oyster and people and and young white people could do and Im, could do anything and imagine anything. And as a result, stuff like this happened. This that cover I remember when I first saw it decades ago. It's I, I before I heard it, I just said, thought to myself, that's got to be good. When I finally got this um, um, as a burnt download off of, off of um, the internet, I don't know how long ago, it it was what I thought it was. It's, it's very mystical and it's folk. And it's um, inspired in part by the incredible string band, but I like this better. I like this band. It's a little more jazzy. I wanted to share 
before I show any more records that I've tried to explain that I come from a, 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 fa a musical family and a religious family. And so music was a big, was important and I was surrounded by it from the beginning. My parents talked about how I was rocking to Chuck Berry and Little Richard and Everly Brothers before I could walk. And also, I need to share that the first music that really turned me on was our Chuck Berry and Little Richard and Elvis and Everly and the Everly Brothers. I love music. And I love rock, you know, this was the music of my childhood. But the Beatles changed my life. I was surrounded by music, so I was hearing jazz from a very early age and appreciating it. I was living the blues and R&B. Those people making those records were coming to our house and jamming. I lived that music. And so when the Beatles came along, that cosmic moment on Ed Sullivan, I felt it. It changed my life. But beyond that, the broader picture of what was possible that was happening in rock music and with young white kids in general compared to um, um, black kids at the time stimulated my, my um, imagination so completely and captivated me and it was like this is my music I like jazz I like r and I like black music it's, it's, it's in me but as a source of identity the Beatles and the British wave was the beginning of what really turns me on here's a three inch CD of Love Me Do um, those records those songs these songs were pure magic on the radio at the time <clears throat> and I was fortunate enough that even though I live here in Nebraska where the racism is thick as thieves and it was the norm as I was growing up my dad I want to remember to bring this up because my dad did this on purpose. He had he he had us grow up in our first few years in a mixed neighborhood, going to a predominantly white school. He did that on purpose. He wanted his kids to see the real world. When you grow up in the inner city, like what they call the ghetto, and depending on your opportunities and your um, income you there's a lot of the world you never see except on tv if even that and my dad i give him credit he also my dad is part white his grandfather is a white man well can my great grandfather on my my dad's side is white and so he was always conflicted my dad was red red haired and very light and when he was young he could pass for white in in, in instances so he had a love-hate relationship with the whole race issue you know what i'm saying and but as a result of growing up with that I recognized that in spite of the color of my skin all people I'm related to all people and then I recognize that this this rock music and this folk music coming you know it was mine as much as the Chuck Berry was as much as the um, Aretha Franklin and Harry Belafonte and Sam Cooke you know these important names from my childhood this white music that captivated my, my imagination was mine too. So I'm trying to make the connection as to why or where this fits into my life, this type of music. Um, this album really, this is special. It's got the, it's got a couple songs in particular, Trafalgar Square and The Tale of the Spider and the Fly where they are the, there are these folk metal melodies. They're simple, but they sound like they're coming from some other time. But they also sound familiar, like, like before this time, and yet they sound like, I remember hearing this. It's weird. And then the use of horns and flute on here, um, not typical. So glad that I got this. It made me um, think to, um, well, what did, what it, it it inspired me to pull a couple records as I was reading the insert because it tells the story about the band here and how they were truly inspired by the
the incredible string band be glad for the song has no ending now this is one of my few um pink label i think islands i got turned on to the incredible string band in high school through my good friend tim who has passed away unfortunately but um it was interesting we both liked music but my friend Tim, who came out as gay while we were kids, and it completely surprised me. I had no idea. It's It was a reflected in his music taste. He liked a lot of music that was kind of associated with gayness that I didn't particularly care for. I can't think of a title to tell you, but you all, if you, you feel... Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is just be, just as dis, before disco happened. The Bowie we related to, David Bowie, the sexual um, uh, ambi ambiguity of it, you know, um, appealed to both of us. To me, I was a little intimidated by it at first, but but my friend Tim got this album when we were kids. Incredible string band, you. And he played it a lot. Honestly, I did not like it that much, but because he played it so much, I became familiar with it. And more than anything, I was intrigued by the look of the band and the whole, just the um, hippie thing around them. These covers, this is a reissue, but... Um, the 5,000 Spirits or the Layers of the Onion. I mean, how can you deny that cover? Mike Karen and Robin Williamson inspired a lot of people. Now, here's the deal. I liked them to a degree, but when I finally heard Clive Palmer, who started Incredible String Band, and he left after making the first <coughs> album, I like this way better. Clive's original band, Spirit of Love. This is more, um, I guess, maybe traditional sounding than Incredible String Band. What I like about this, and it's similar to the Synanthesia, is the strength of the melodies and the voice. There's just something about the way these songs come across. I like the words, too, for the most part. But there's power in the presentation and the it's hard to put into words I know it when I hear it and I love it the power of the melody here's the second band Moishi McStiff and the Tartan Lancers of the Sacred Heart crazy cover crazy title excellent album and all these, al these albums I'm showing they're hard to find. Originals are expensive. Here's an original that goes back to my actual tight teen years. I found it when I was maybe 18, 19, I think. Dando Shaft. And this is an original on the RCA Neon label, which is a label I would collect if I could. I have a few, but it's like, again, they're artifacts from the past. That it's a beautiful label. I'm going to show it. This is a folk-based album. Fantastic. Love it. Absolutely love it. So we know the uh, RCA. And it's RCA Neon. And here's the uh, great... Is that Maxfield Parish? Great label. Very good album. And even now, I can put this on and just be taken away. Whispering Ned... Waves on the ether, upon the ether. Riverboat. Those are some fantastic songs, and they do. In, they are a direct influence on the, my um, development as a songwriter and and music writer. You can hear it on my first couple albums. I got a couple more records I'll get to, but I want to sh finish showing. I was going to pull some more because I have I have more. Um, music that fits in. Here's one that I can grab with the English folk thing. And there's records I don't have that I want that I'm still after. Tudor Lodge is one I've been after forever. Still want one. 
But Trader Horn, this is a reissue. Again, if you can find an original of this, you'll be paying big money. This is really good. J Judy Dibble, who was originally in um, King Crimson and possibly, was it Fairport Convention or Pentangle? One of those bands. <clears throat> but she um, made this album, Trader Horn. This is, it's way, oh, it's, it's wonderful. And one more that doesn't sound like any of those others, but it came to mind. Spiral Gyra. I'd like to get their other albums too. This is Old Boot Wine. And there's a Canterbury connection. Um, um, what's it? Barbara, Barbara, Ga Barbara Gaskin, who was um, in the North Dets and sang with Hatfield in the North. And Dave Stewart is on this. This is really good too. I love this stuff. And um, it was, a, like I said, it was a way of me carving out a space mentally that I liked, felt comfortable, and I wanted to be in. The music I was hearing around me in the hood, you know, the R&B and the, the so-called love songs, which are just songs about having sex, and then the blues. It's like, this is not where I want to be in my head. I mean, it's like, you know, certain songs, good songs, I like a good song. But the overall feeling is like, I don't want to be here. I want to be somewhere else. And the music takes me there. Hope you understand that. I love all musics, but the um, the British invasion changed my life. Okay, so to, to continue with that, when I went down to uh, Grapefruit to get Synanthesia, and the title comes from them hearing it mispronounced by someone. Synesthesia is the word. It's something I've definitely experienced in my life, especially when I was younger. Um, music, music was colors and and um, texture and tactile textures to me. I mean, I can still um, make the association, you know. But while I was there in the used, they had a couple records and one in the news section, so I picked this up. Yes, House of Yes, live from the House of Blues. Now, I had to look at it to make sure I wanted to bother with it. First off, it had to have John Anderson. The, 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 the guy that sings now and has been with him for a while, I've seen Yes with both John Anderson and the current guy. He's good. But um, I wanted John Anderson, you know. And sure enough, it is. Uh, John Anderson is on here. Chris Squire, Steve, well, Steve Howe. And this is good. The sound quality is okay. But I only played one side, so I might be wrong. It might be better than okay. But it was in the used section. Blue vinyl. I said, it's coming home with me. I love Yes. I've seen him twice, three times, at least twice, maybe three. I love this music. And um, still, it's not a, for me, it's not a nostalgia trip. Yes, music is wonderful. Still remember the first time I heard Roundabout on the radio. I was a teen laying in bed trying to go to sleep. When that mm, thing woke me right up and said, What is this? Found this as well in the use section. And I have an original, so I didn't need it, but it's like it's um it's a numbered limited edition reissue on 45 RPM of Frank Zappa doing Lumpy Gravy. And the record even though it was in the use section, look at that, that's virtually brand new. It's numbered. I like this album, I always have. And it's numbered and it's also marble, vinyl, burgundy. Beautiful. Plays wonderful. I had to listen to this all the way through. Zappa. What's interesting it, for me is that as I was listening to it, it had been a while, and it was almost like hearing it in part for the first time until I get to, the, there's certain parts where it's, it has that melodic shift and mood where it's like, oh, that's what I'm looking for. So I, when I hear it, I always remember it. And there's a couple moments like that on here on Lumpy Gravy. Zappa was a genius, people. He might have been misogynistic and whatever else you want to, call him but he was a genius and the other album I got 
which is a reissue, which was in the news news section. They'd gotten it in before, and I didn't get it. Thankfully, they got another copy. This I remember from when it came out, Summerhill. This was back in the days of cutouts, when there were these tiers of prices of cutout records, records that didn't sell, so they were um, sold to a manufacturer and then sold as overstock. But this would be one where I could afford the 39 cent records and 75 cent records, but this was like usually a dollar fifty-seven or something, so I could never get a copy of it. This is really good. This is what this was. What this is what I was looking for, and um, really enjoyed the first listen to it yesterday. It is psychedelic, but it is or orchestral as well. Um, good players and good writing on this. Um, side two starts off real psychedelic with sound effects and shit. Summerhill. If I remember correctly, this was on Bill Cosby's label, Tetragrammaton. I think it was. So there's that. Sitting out from play yesterday as I listened to part of the uh, soundtrack to the, mo the uh, motorcycle movie, The Wild Angels. Remember these? Davy Allen and the Arrows is, is the um, surf band on here that I like. That and then this. Valerio Cosite plays Popol Vuh. Someone sent this to me. And this doesn't sound very much like Popol Vuh. It's really good, though. When it when the Popol Vuh um, is obvious in the way he's doing this, it's really subtle. This is really cool. really enjoyed this yesterday. And I've been meaning to... Uh, get into some chicoria and so I, I pulled this ARC and this is fantastic um, it's it's back when he was doing more outside type of stuff I love his style early ECM and the players Dave Holland and Barry Altshow it's like almost like a team made in heaven and um, I pulled these records while pulling those I haven't played them yet but I'll show them now he sings, now he sobs. Fantastic. Chick Corea. I think this is a Belgian band. Jazz Rock. Cortex. Excellent album. This is real good. And then this Italian. It's in that Italian book. Corte de, Corte de Miracoli. Fantastic. Excellent. Progressive Rock. Yeah, this is the shit. So, I don't know if my explaining or telling my little story about my past helps understand, helps you understand my orientation or not. I just felt like I wanted to try to get that across. Because I have dealt with all my life this whole idea that I'm not black enough. From, a, from certain other ignorant black people, almost like reverse prejudice, it's like, it's like stupid. It's like, if, if I'm not fitting into a certain mold then somehow something's wrong with me and I've always it just you know incenses me it's like I'm a human being the entire universe I'm part of it so all of this music is mine it's not color coded I'd have more music from places like um, well all over the world if I could Argentina South America um, island countries. I have some, but I'd have more if, if it was available. I'm interested in all of it. Okay, it's Friday. So some of you have money. Get this while you can. I just sold the last Muse. I'm extremely pleased with the response to this recording. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe it was going to be a boutique, you know, release for me and Brian because of the nature of what we did, which is soundcraft improvisation. But this came out really good, and it's connecting. People are letting me know they really like this and are listening to this. So get your copy while you can. Let me take a look now. Like I said, it's in an edition of 300. I have 100 to sell because I went in on the project with Brian Day on his label. So you can get, how many do I have left? Let me see here. 
Come on. Show me the information. So it's already gone pretty well. It doesn't say, but I've already sold um, upwards of um, 30 copies already. So get it while you can. Okay, folks, have a good weekend. And as always, let me know how you're doing.